so we've got some wonderful updates around the Julian Timber and that update is that Julian Timber has been included in the Arsenal squad for the Champions League knockout stages now I don't know about anyone else but that's absolutely massive news for us because we see how Zinchenko has been performing as of late um He's been on and off. He's very good going forward. But coming to defensive side, he has improved. I have to give him that. He has, Zinchenko has improved in his defensive abilities. But it's still not good enough. He's still fall way, way, way short of the mark of what um, the type of player we need in his position. So, Julian Timber coming back is a welcome, welcome addition. Kivio came on and we're going to take a look on his clip and... Eden, Eden magnificent when he came on. Bearing in mind, he came on for a short spell um, for the second half. He's still done very well. But Timber comes back isn't... For me, Timber is one of the best left back slash right back in the league right now. Now, one might say that how can you be assessing him based off what you've seen in preseason? Not just preseason, is what I've seen him done for Ajax. Also, how you see him played against Man City. I know it's just one match, but you can see a quality player when he plays against a quality team. Now, it's hard to judge a player when he plays against rubbish teams, but when you see a, uh, a player um, plays against a quality team and dominate that match against very, very good players, as what he done against City, you have to put your hands up and say that this guy is very, very good. And I don't think anyone in the Arsenal fan base will say that Julian Timber is not a quality player. So this is a welcome addition. And if he's going to be back in the, in, 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 the, in the squad in the knockout stages, that's two matches away. So we've got West Ham next week. We've got Burnley on the 17th, which is a Saturday, Saturday after. And then we've got um, Porto, which is in the week, the 21st. So he's going to be back for Porto. So if he's back for Porto, He's going to be in the squad for Porto. He could be in the squad against um, Burnley. I'm not saying West Ham. West Ham might be a bit short, but he might be in the squad of, for Burnley. And even if he's not in the squad for Burnley, guess what? Guess what match we've got after Porto? We've got Newcastle, and he's definitely going to be in the, in the squad for Newcastle. Now, Newcastle, I know he's been performing very bad of late, but we can't we can't keep Newcastle down because they've got a very good player. We can't um, basically underestimate them. They're one of the reasons why we failed last season. They're one of the, the teams that basically kick uh, uh, kick us in the in the basically in the nuts when we're down. They were one of those teams, right? And so we can't take them for granted. We can't. They've, once you've got quality players in the team, you can bring some performance out of nowhere, especially if the individual players are very motivated to play a particular team. So we can't count them out. So Ivan Duran team but is a massive, massive coup for us. Massive, massive new for us going into those matches. Now, another thing I want to talk about is Yoya Toro. Yoya Toro said, listen, you see that win over Liverpool? For me, I think Jorginho was incredible in midfield. He was a coach in midfield. You could see he was placing his teammates, talking and communicating really, really well. Declan Rice was really good. And I think Arsenal won the game because they won the battle in midfield, which I totally agree. Arsenal are still contenders. They are showing that because every team has to count on them. Now, this is what I'm saying. That Listen, the midfield... In midfield is what won us the game um, um, on Sunday. It was because of the Rice and Jorginho together. And not just that. We know about Martin getting the goal. And he was absolutely brilliant taking on Trent. But for me, the middle of the park is was most important in that pitch. Uh, on that pitch. The middle of the park. And once we dominate that, everything else is just going to fall into place. Um, and bear in mind, Liverpool midfield was so weak, by the way. So I understand. Even if they weren't weak, I still think we would dominate midfield because we played against them in the FA Cup. We've done the same formation with Jorginho and Declan Rice as a two. And also, Jorginho sometimes playing a two with Odegaard when, when they attack and press high and then drop back and defend as a two with um, uh, 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 um, Declan Rice. So I think that um, Carlo Toro is absolutely right and he said he was a coach on the on the pitch and I showed you Georgino was literally pointing where Gabriel Magalhães should pass the ball um, to Martinelli and that's exactly what he done we, and that's how we got the second goal that's how Martinelli scored by um, um, Alisson and Van Dijk having a mix up so Carlo Toro is absolutely spot on with this comment now another thing I want to highlight is that this guy this guy Bakoye Saka only three players have provided more assists than Bakaya Saka across Europe's major league in all competitions since August the 22nd. So cool that one and a half season, right? One and a half season. Um, so we see Kevin De Bruyne at 32. We see Antonio Griezmann at 25. Salah at 24. Saka at 23. Vinicius Junior at 23. So Saka and Vinicius Junior are on the same amount of of assists. Bear in mind, Saka has not been having a good season. So if he had, if he was having a good season, I would give him about three or four more. And that would basically bring him above Griezmann, which probably be in second place. I wouldn't give him 10 um, to be competing with De Bruyne, but I would give him a bit more to because we see that when he plays, he's normally getting assists, especially last season. He, 
he was the man on form but this season he's been of a slow burner so even considering being a slow burner and still getting those amount of assists we have to say that Saka is one of the best players in the world right now one of the for facts he's one of the best wingers facts but we have to say that he's one of the best players in the world he's on almost in the same as, as, as Salah now yes I understand that he needs to improve his goal count to be on certain par but where he is right now is still one of the best players in the world for me um um and arguably one of um the best winger because who else is a better winger than Saka right now we could say Salah Vinicius Junior but that's a, a that's an, a, a fair argument to to have and to be having an argument of a 21 year old 22 year old with a, a experienced veteran like Salah and Vinicius Junior basically in his prime right now so I don't believe Saka is in his prime I don't believe Saka has reached his prime yet so to have to be having these kind of conversation Griezmann which, which is a very experienced mature player um, is another player as well and Kevin De Bruyne we all know that he's basically on the verge of retiring because he's that old and for Saka he's like the next frontier and you can say Vinicius Junior is part of that as well and he's leading the list. There's no Mbappe. <laughs> there is no um, Mus Musiala. There is no Pedro. Pedro. The Pedro. There's no one like on in this category right now. So there's no Foden, right? So uh, that's what I'm saying. That we have to give Starboy the credit he deserves, even when having a bad season. He's still performing. He's still, he's still got a goal against Liverpool, even though he's not performing well. So you can see that when he's on fire, when he's on fire, he's gonna be burning everything down that's my star boy so i want to big up sucker big up sucker always because where even when he's down he's still up when he's up he's way up you get what i'm saying so big up sucker always bringing in uh, making us proud making us arsenal supporters proud now another thing we noticed today that takira tomiasa has agreed a new contract with arsenal sources have told the insider that a deal all but completed more confirmation Thomas is set to um, set for a major increase to his 55k a week salary with an announcement expected soon once again another brilliant news Tommy Asa for me is one of our uh, Arsenal um, favorite um, defenders Arsenal fans favorite defenders Tommy Asa is one of them um, well it's hard to say one of them because every defender I don't see one defender any fan would dislike right now, apart from Cedric, which we don't count Cedric in the team. But everyone loves Ben White. Everyone loves Saliba. Everyone loves Gabriel Magalhães. But uh, everyone, um, I think the, the, the fans rather Saliba than everyone else. If you're going to have favourites, I think Saliba is a fan favourite above everyone else. And I think Timber is gradually, if he continues um, the way he started, he will be above Saliba. I can see that already. But um, give your is the weakest i would say amongst everyone i know that zinchenko is very weak at defending but he's still a very good player and because he's very good at attacking most fans would rather him than kivio so i would say kivio is, is the lower on the pecking order with um zinchenko being second to last but tamiasu is above that tamiasu when he performs he's second to none no one can be on tamiasu's level on his day you have to play very, very well to be competing to Tom and uh, to, to, to Tommy Asso on his day. On his day is one of the best left back, right back in the league, right? So Tommy Asso for me signing a contract extension I'm happy with. Now, once again, this is not confirmed yet, but all of the reports from the other day have been saying that listen, the t the clubs and um, the club and his his agent and his is his entourage basically or have of in dialogue and it looks positive and um, it looks he wants to sign the player wants to sign and the club wants to sign and so it looks positive so basically i believe this story because of previous links so so that's another interesting um, topic to see that timber is back tommy also is back as well and thomas party is basically back but he got a niggling injury the other day and man i'm happy georgina is performing the way he is right now because so with timber coming back in the team and georgina plays playing the way he's playing right now i don't see i don't i'm not scared of anyone in the champions league I'm not scared of anyone in the Premier League. City, my, I'm, I'm scared of the teams that might set up a low block against us. Just like when me and Omar have the video, he's saying that listen, we ain't got a plan B, which is absolutely right. We haven't got, we haven't got a plan B, and this is it. Where if you haven't got a plan B, and these lower teams they set up some low blocks against you, you're not gonna get, you're not gonna um, get the results you require. You, you might get a lucky draw, but that's the video, guys. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Catch you in the next one. Goodbye.